Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is ordering stickers, so be looking out for those very soon. Top 10 EDC blade shapes. Now there are a ton of blade shapes and way more than 10, especially if you throw in all the variables with the blade shapes and all the different uh, variables that each blade shape can have. But even just on its own, there's more than 10. But today I am talking about my, what I think is the top 10 best blade shapes for EDC, starting off with the recurve. So a recurve blade shape has this little area right here where it it has a belly that goes in and then comes back out usually on a drop point blade shape but it can be on any blade shape i've seen it on even uh tontos i've seen it on everything a lot of fixed blades have it but also a lot of edc blade or uh, folding knives have it you can see the belly right here that sucks in and then comes back out it helps to keep material into this section so when you're using it it basically sucks the material into that belly to, to help keep the blade into the material and the material um, on the blade rather than slipping up and off of the blade so it helps um, make cutting a little easier also a um, a blade that doesn't have a great choil a great sharpening choil can after many sharpenings can start turning into a recurve if you're not careful or if you don't cut in a sharpening choil. Next up. But the recurve blade shape can be very useful. Some people consider it a little bit harder to sharpen. Um, I, I just think it takes the right tool or, um, you know. It's, it's basically just as easy as any other blade shape. Next up, the straight back. Okay, so I used to have a bunch of straight backs. I've given a bunch of them out. Um, this is the closest thing I have to a straight back. But a straight back is basically exactly what it sounds like. The spine of the blade goes straight across. Usually having a flat area right here going to a belly up to the tip nice straight design and this one has a little tiny bit of a drop point this is actually technically considered a drop point but it's very subtle this is more of a straight back so the straight back is a very useful blade shape it helps you um have a little bit more belly than or should i say a lot more belly than you would have on a drop point blade shape so you can use the belly you have a long flat area usually right here for doing push cups and also usually a straight back doesn't have a dual grind this one does just another variable um for a blade shape but usually they don't but this one does so very useful blade shape um great working blade shape especially for um for doing you know different tasks where you're going to need the belly and a flat area for push cuts next up the japanese tanto japanese tanto this would be considered the authentic japanese tanto which would be a straight back design dual ground blade where it has um, two different grinds the flat area and then the belly one thing a japanese tanto always has is a rounded tip or basically a belly up front here is another japanese tanto you'll notice it has the same thing this one's just a little bit more pronounced where it's rounded right here and then it has the dual grind a lot some of them have the little tip right here this one has a small tip right here but because it has the the two different grinds it makes it to where it has the tip right there because you know sharpening this side and then having a separate area to sharpen you're always going to have to marry the two edges together now a jap the difference between the japanese tanto and american tanto is that a japanese tanto will always be rounded up here in the front so these are very cool, very good knives for use as a tool 
like what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times the tips are more thicker for prying purposes, scraping purposes, and then also it gives you a secondary edge right there to use like a tip. Same thing right there to use like a tip, but then it also gives you a good flat area for push cuts or for just close contact work. But the Japanese Tonto originally came from the Japanese sword, but when knocked down into a smaller version as a folder knife, it is very useful. A lot of times what the use is going to, where it's going to be most important is on the grind and the geometry of the blade. Next up, the American Tonto. So now the American Tonto has the flat edge where it's just straight. And then you have the secondary tip, nice and straight. Now this is a good working blade shape. It's a lot of people consider it tactical. It's very good for piercing, for having a strong tip. Um, especially when you get the, the dual grinds like this one does, like this one has. And then you notice how this one has more of a drop to a Tonto. And this one has the straight and then the drop. So you see the different variables there. But it's it's really good for being able, or for EDC in a sense that you have that secondary tip that makes it to where you can open things up without worrying about puncturing them. But then you have a nice acute tip for the finer things but then also a nice strong flat for push cuts. And also the, the, the edge right here can be used for scraping. You can use, if depending on how thick the blade is and the geometry and everything, you can use it for prying and you know wedging things apart, using it kind of like a little pry bar. There's, um, they're very, very useful blade shapes. So there's the American Tonto. Next up, the clip point. So the clip point blade shape has a um, usually a straight back design down to a dramatic drop that does or doesn't recurve back up. Sometimes a recurve back up. Sometimes this little recurve spot right here either curves up higher than others. Like you see how this one just drops straight down. And it's a clip point. It looks like you basically just clip the front of the blade off. Very cool. A lot of them come with deep hollow ground blades, as like these two do, but not always. But clip point blades were used as an all-around EDC blade shape to where it can be used for hunting and multi-purpose. So you have the belly right here that's really good for skinning and hunting purposes but then also a nice tip for penetrating like skin or whatever you're trying to penetrate to open up whether it's packaging or whatever and then um, a nice good flat here for doing push cuts and then also um, you can also use the belly for cutting rope really good and it's, it's a very strong um, blade design. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times they do have a little bit of a fragile tip. Not always, sometimes. Um, and then, but they are a very useful blade shape. They help give you um, a very versatile blade shape since they have a bunch of different design attributes in one, I guess you could say. It basically just has different of lots of different parts of blade shape designs or the benefits of different blade shapes in it you know having the flat having the belly having a good tip having a nice drop down to the tip so very very cool next up harpoon blade shape sometimes also spear point is also used i'm going to be using two different blade shapes because this is kind of a spear point too having the tip basically right down the middle 
the spine and the belly meeting at the point. Also, a harpoon having this little curve up right here, which gives you a little bit more strength behind the tip. It's very good for piercing tactics, um, but also still very useful for EDC, being able to get a lot of leverage down to the tip. This blade shape will be very good for somebody who likes to use their tip, but then also likes the bell, not a belly, um, a flat area right here for, you know, close up cutting, push cuts, and then, um, but with also still having a nice straight shot to the tip where you know where your tip is at all time. It's very easy to use the tip for whatever purposes you are using the blade shape for or whatever penetrating details you're using the, the blade shape for. Next up, the Warncliffe. Now the Warncliffe and the sheep's foot can be universally, um, I guess a lot of people call uh, a Warncliffe a sheep's foot and a sheep's foot a Warncliffe. Now I'm gonna sell it right now exactly what a real Warncliffe is. A real Warncliffe has a complete flat edge right here and tapers from the spine all the way down to the tip. This would be the closest very, you know, the closest resemblance to a real Warncliffe. Now this actually technically has a little tiny bit of a belly right there. Not much. Most people don't even acknowledge it. So this would be a lot very similar to a Warncliffe aside from it has these little edges right there. Technically, it should just flow all the way down to the tip just one taper all the way down but it's still very very close you know if you just take out these little corners right there that's a warren cliff blade shape very useful blade shape it helps you get the same strength you would get here here so you can easily have a lot of pressure on the tip so basically for when you're doing your cutting tasks on materials that require a strong penetration or strong tip and you need to get all the way through it and maybe it's dense material and you have to cut all the way through it it's very good for utility purposes kind of like a razor blade and also giving you enough flat for doing your push cut still and getting other tasks done that you would need to do with a blade, reverse cuts, um, and still being able to have the strength of the blade the same all the way down it. A lot of blade shapes when the tip is up higher, you're not going to get the same type of leverage on the tip as you would on the rest of the blade shape. Very, very useful and very, very good blade shape for everyday carry. Especially for utility tasks and the working, um, a, a person that uh, does lots of utility jobs in their working day. Next up, the spay point. Now, some people call this the reverse tanto. I don't believe it's a reverse tanto and I will explain why? Um, there is such thing. It's just not on this because in order for it to be a reverse tanto, this secondary edge right here would have to be sharp. So if this was sharp right here, then I would call it a reverse tanto. This is a spay point. Also, another spay point is would be like this one spay point this could even be maybe considered a spay point but i would consider this more of a sheep's foot but it also could be considered a spay point it's basically just where the tip is clipped off right here right before or just right at the tip and it's a very useful blade shape it gives you a little bit of belly right here so for whatever you need the belly of your knife for lots of people like to to use the belly of their knife 
um, belly on a knife is really good for slicing and it's basically kind of like the like kind of like what you think of like a pizza cutter where you have the rounded edge as the blade and you also have a nice durable or fine tip depending on the blade geometry but it gives you a good tip for penetrating giving you good leverage because the tip is closer to the flat which gives you a lot of leverage on the tip but then also gives you a long flat area for push cuts and for whatever you need the flat area of your edge for everybody uses their blades differently very good pull cuts very good push cuts good slicing and lots of leverage on the tip <sighs> Next up, the sheep's foot. Sheep's foot blade shape. Um, a lot of people think it's because it looks like a sheep's foot. It's really because it was designed for um, help cutting the hooves off of sheep's foot. And it has a strong taper down towards the tip and then a dramatic drop to the tip. There are different versions of this. Just like we were saying, there's lots of different variables. Here's another version right here taper down then a strong drop down to the tip some of these blade shapes do resemble some of the other ones and like i said i would consider this a sheep's foot um some of these you could consider kind of a um a uh, spay point but it's really not it is a sheep's foot sheep's foot blade shapes are very very useful i find them to be one of the most useful blade shapes out there they give you the great strength at the tip, so you have lots of leverage at the tip, but it gives you a little bit of belly to where you can use the, the, the belly part of your knife for skinning, for cutting packages, cutting things open, um, cutting rope. Um, you have the flat area for pull cuts, push cuts, and usually it gives you a nice strong tip but also a nice point for penetration depending on the geometry. See how this one has a nice strong spine, but then a nice acute tip for penetration. So it usually gives you a pretty strong tip that you don't really have to worry about breaking off. But then again, like I said, that depends on the geometry. One like this is very thin, but you see how you got the taper down to the tip gives you a nice fine tip sheep's foot blades are very very useful blade shapes for edc now i am going to talk about two more blade shapes the new one that um jason larson helped me name and i know it's not a new blade shape but we decided to come up with our own name for it and it's the drop foot and um i owe jason larson for coming up with the name i know you're thinking like yeah we've seen this blade shape before but if you think about it it's still a little more unique than some of the other blade shapes even though it has some of the similarities as a sheep's foot and stuff like that that's why we're calling it the drop foot very similar to the the spider co chef and the kershaw bare knuckle i would call the kershaw bear or yeah the kershaw bare knuckle more of a sheep's foot but this is a drop foot here's a drop foot and then i think i got one more sitting right here next to me yes right here the drop foot blade shape so every time you see this blade shape from now on you know with the name of it it's called the drop foot the drop foot blade shape is an extremely useful blade shape for edc it helps you get all the leverage you can get on the tip a lot like the warren cliff and the sheep's foot but then still giving you an area that's not quite a flat because it slowly tapers up towards the tip but it gives you the same amount of leverage behind the a flat that would normally be on another blade shape in the belly so instead of it being a flat it is a belly but it helps you use it just like a flat area of a blade where you can use push cuts reverse cuts and then also gives you a little bit of belly to where you can use it still without penetrating very very useful blade shape and this blade shape is going to be good for people that 
that do like to do utility cuts and they like to have that leverage at the tip with the same amount of pressure at the tip as you could get nice close to your hand. There's a lot of blade shapes, like I said before, it gives you lots of leverage really close to your hand, but not a lot of leverage at the tip. The drop foot lets you get that leverage. Last but not least, the drop point blade shape. Now there are different variants of this blade shape. Lots and lots of different variants of this blade shape. This is basically the standard drop point blade shape, but even this is, is um, a good representation of the drop point. Basically the drop point blade shape gives you a flat and then the belly up to the tip, the spine drops down to the tip. Sometimes it's a faster taper and sometimes it gives you a straight back right here and then drops down to the tip. But they all have a flat and then a belly to the tip. Usually this is the most universe or most versatile blade shape. And I say that because it helps give you the flat for push cuts, pull cuts, the belly for slicing capabilities. Um, while for hunting, opening stuff, whatever you're going to use your belly for, but then it also helps you get to the tip. Now, there are different styles of this. Sometimes you have drop points where the tip is easy to get to, and then some of them have a big, big belly and are a little bit harder to get to the tip. So depending on what your purposes you use your knife for depends on whether or not you're going to want a very strong drop down to the tip to where you get lots of leverage to the tip or if you're going to want a bigger belly so that you can get more leverage on the belly of your knife. The drop point does come in a lot of different variants to where it's, um, you know, the, it's there's a lot of different styles of drop points and it's kind of cool because it helps you kind of pick which one's better for you i prefer the kind with the, the with the more leverage at the tip i prefer a little less belly like this one or like this one or even like the one i just folded up like this um even like this and then the ones I prefer the least are the ones with the big bellies like this. Now this is still very useful because they even get bigger than this. Some of them even come up higher where the tips way up there, kind of like the, the straight back we first showed. So there you guys go. Very, very useful top 10 EDC blade, or the best, the top 10 best blade shapes for EDC. Peace.